Hey everyone, welcome back to Code in Motion. Today we're looking at a really cool problem, number 23, merge k sorted lists. So we're given an array of k linked lists and each linked list is sorted in ascending order. We need to merge all the linked lists into one sorted linked list and return back that list. So if we look at an example, we have 145, 134, 2, and 6. We need to return back one linked list of all of these numbers in sorted order. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 6. So the reason I think this problem is so cool is because you can use two main different approaches. One is going to use a variation of merge sort with merging two linked lists at a time, and the other is going to use a heap. For now, let's deal with the merge sort solution. So what we could do over here is take this input array of linked lists and let's break them apart. So now we're looking at each list separate. And then the idea is at every iteration, we're going to merge two lists at a time. So let's merge these two lists on the left and then on the right as well. And now we have two lists left over. Now we need to merge them again. And this is the final result. Now, the reason I think this is so cool is because there's another leak code question, number 21, uh, where you have to merge two sorted linked lists. And so we're actually going to be reusing that solution uh, to code out this solution. And you'll see how that looks in the coding implementation. But this is the high level idea. We're going to be merging two linked lists at a time until we're done in a merge sort fashion. Now, I want to look at the time complexity for this one. So how many operations are we performing for on the first row? When we merge all of these elements, we have to iterate through all these elements, right? So this is O of n time. And I should define what n means. In this case, n is all the elements in all of the linked lists, right? So n is not just the elements in one linked list. No, n is all the elements in all of the linked lists, right? So that's what I mean when I say O of n. If we look at the second row, this is also O of n operation. To merge these two lists, we have to iterate through all of them. And lastly, to combine the final list, this is also O of n. Now, what is the depth of the tree? The depth of the tree is log k. How many times do we perform the merging of two lists? Well, it's actually log k, where k is the size of the lists you have. Okay, so it's because we're breaking them apart and then we're combining them um, two linked lists at a time at every iteration. So the total time complexity here is O of n times log k. And the space complexity is log k if you solve this in a recursive fashion, uh, because that's the depth of the tree. All right, now let's take a look at the heap solution. So we have three lists over here that we want to merge into one sorted list. Well, what data structure could help with that? At every iteration, we need to know the minimum value that we want to use, right? The minimum value between these three lists. What we could do is, Put the first node of each of these lists into a min heap, and the min heap is going to keep track of the minimum element to use between all the lists at every iteration. So in this case, if we add nodes 1, 2, and 5 into a min heap, the min heap will keep track of the minimum node, which in this case is 1. And at every iteration, I can pop out the minimum node, use that in my result, and then add the next node that the list has in the min heap, and the min heap will keep track of the minimum node at every iteration. So let's see how that looks. I know I said a lot, but it makes more sense once you, once you see the animation. So we have a min heap. We're going to pop out the element one, and we're going to process it. So let's pop out the minimum, and now we're processing node one. Let's add it to the result because this is the minimum value. We just pop popped it out of the min heap. And now node one has a next node, right? So we need to add that node back to the heap, right? We can't lose track of the entire list. If we process a node, we need to see if it has a next node. If it has a next node, add it back to the heap because the heap is keeping track of the minimum value for all the lists. So in this case, we want to add node three to the min heap. And now we have two, five, three. Now we, we get rid of one. We no longer have to look at it for the rest of the algorithm. And we're going to, once again, pop the minimum from the min heap. So now we're processing two. Okay, let's add two to our result. So now we have one, two. And let's check if two has a next node. It does, it's six. So let's add six to the min heap. We need to keep track of this list, right? 
And now we could remove two. We no longer need to look at it from this algorithm. Now, once again, let's pop out the minimum element from the min heap. It's a three. So let's process three and add it to our result. And now we have one, two, three. So notice how we're keeping track of the minimum values. We still maintaining a sorted list at the end to return, but we're using a min heap to keep track of the minimum element we should use at every iteration. And so node three has a next node, which is four. Let's add it to the heap. And now we have four, five, six in our min heap. Let's resolve three and pop out the next minimum from the min heap. Now we have four. We're gonna scan four and we're gonna add it to our result. Now four has no next node, right? So there's no more nodes in list one. We exhausted all the possible elements. So in this case, that's fine, we add nothing. Now the problem becomes the min heap is five and six. And so there's only two more lists to merge, right? The length of the min heap is the length of how many lists we have. And in this case, we had three. So the maximum length of the min heap was three. But now we only have two remaining lists. So the, the length is two. Now let's pop out five, which is the next minimum. We're gonna process five and we're gonna add five to our result. Okay, five has no next node. So there's nothing to add to the min heap. And now we process the last node in the min heap, which is six. Let's add six to our result. Six has no next node. And so now the length of our min heap is zero. There's no more min heap. And so we're done the algorithm. Okay. Now what's the time complexity of this? The time complexity is still O of n times log K. And the reason is that we have a min heap of size K. K is the K is how many lists we have, right? And the reason why the min heap is size of K is because we add one node uh, from all of the lists into the heap. Now we have O of n elements and for every element, we pop one element from the heap. Popping from a heap is a log K operation. And so the total time complexity is O of n times log K. For the space complexity, we have O of K because we're storing K elements in the min heap. Okay, so let's code out the first solution, which is using a merge sort approach with merge two lists. Now, like I mentioned, we're gonna be reusing the solution from elite code problem number 21, merge two sorted lists. So if you didn't solve that question yet, I highly encourage you to watch my video on that because this is literally the solution, merging two sorted linked lists, and we're gonna be reusing this code in this solution. And that's why this problem is really cool because we're reusing a previously code solution to solve this one. And so we're gonna use this helper method to merge uh, two sorted lists in our main algorithm. So let's get started with this problem. First, I'm just gonna have a base case. So if not list, so if the current lists is null, we're just gonna return back none to avoid any null pointer exceptions. And then I'm gonna say while the length of the lists uh, does not equal one, because at the end of the day, we want one sorted list that contains all the elements from the other previous lists, right? And so inside of this loop, we're going to perform the merge sort. So I'm going to have a sorted lists empty array. And now we're going to say for i in range, we're going to go from zero to len of the lists, but we're going to increment i by two instead of by one at every iteration. And the logic behind this is because we're going to be merging two sorted lists uh, at the same time. And so list one is equal to lists at i, and list two is equal to lists at i plus one, if, we have to be careful here, if i plus one is less than len lists, else it's none, right? We don't wanna go out of the bounds. And so it could be that we have an odd number of lists, and so we'll take none in this case, and we'll just merge list one with none, which in that case, we'll just get list one. Now I'm going to say sorted lists dot append self dot merge to lists list one list two right we're going to merge the two lists and then we're going to add them to our sorted lists array now at the end of this iteration we need to um, override our list variable to the new sorted lists right because lists contained all the individual lists but now after this iteration, we merged uh, two of them at a time, right? And so we need to constantly update the current lists that we're looking at. And we're actually done. Now we just return back 
lists of zero because it only contains one element, which is all of the elements in sorted order. So let's run this and just verify that it succeeds. And it does. Okay, so now let's code out the heap solution. The first thing we need to do is import the heap Q library in order to use the heapify and heap push and heap pop helper methods. Now I'm going to do is define a min heap. So min heap is equal to just an empty list for now. And I'm going to say for I node in enumerate lists. And the enumerate keywords in Python, not only does it give you the index that you're currently iterating through, but it also gives you the element of the actual list. So this is just a nice shorthand notation. We're going to get the index and the actual node value of while we're iterating through the lists. And so I'm going to say if node, because the problem says that sometimes you could have a null node within the list, we're going to say that min heap dot append. And now this is where it gets tricky. Technically, we just want to add the node to the min heap, but in Python or in leak code, the node is an internal object and there's no custom comparator that tells Python to look for node dot value. And so to get around this in Python, this is pretty common for heap questions. You're going to create a tuple and you're going to use node dot value for the first element in the tuple because Python will use that as a comparator. Next, you want to put the index over here just in case there's two nodes that have the same value. Uh, because you want to break the tie with the index. So we'll just use the smaller index first. That's fine. And then you'll actually put your node. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the heap queue library in order to heapify the heap. So um, heapify the min heap. And now um, min heap uh, will store the, the smallest element at the first index. Now we're going to create a dummy node and a previous node um, just to change the links of each node within the linked list. So this is going to be list node zero. The, the number doesn't matter. We're just using a dummy pointer so that it's easier to return back from this. And you'll see that shortly. So now I'm going to say while min heap, while we still have elements in the heap, we're going to need to pop out from the heap. So I don't really care about the node value. Uh, we're just using it for order in this case. So I'm going to ignore that. We're going to extract out the I and we're going to extract out the node. So this is going to be heap Q dot heap pop. And we insert the heap over here. And so now we're going to say prev.next is equal to node. This is how at every iteration, we're going to intertwine uh, the linked list and return back one list at the end. So prev.next is node and previous is prev.next. We have to move the previous pointer um, to the next element. Now we're going to say if node.next. So if there is a next node, remember, uh, we have to add that back to the min heap, right? So heap q dot heap push min heap, we have to specify the heap to push to, and I'm going to have node.next.val. We're going to keep i and node.next. Okay. And now we're actually finished. We just have to return back dummy.next. And let's verify this runs. And it's successful. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, but I hope you learned a lot, especially the differences between the two solutions. I think it's worthwhile to go over both just so you see that there's multiple ways to solve the same problem. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.